I feel compelled to dispute some of the accusations of a missionary, Father Angelo Panza, on the interview Soul TV 2000 and that of Radio Armonia Humana and of several press articles online referring to five commando mercenaries during the Congo campaign of the 60s. The only photos of Angelo Panza with a firearm appear on the internet and is dressed casually, gripping an FN. In another picture, he holds a machine gun with a written remark, Angelo the Scrounger, chaplain of Fire Commando. As said by Angelo Panza, the other two photos were taken during the Stanleyville Battle of November 1964. That was a combined operation by Belgian pilots with five and six commandos, led by Colonel van der Waller. The result was that most civilian and religious hostages were rescued. According to his declarations, Angelo Panza was promoted by Mobutu himself with the rank of Congolese Army Colonel and given a group of 50 fighters on the Radio Armonia Humana, he says that the combatants were 65. Half of them members of fire commando given to him by Colonel Matt Mike, but why he keeps on calling him O'Hare? His surname is Ho. Anyway, while the other half were selected by Angelo Panza himself one by one. <laughs> that is an incredible story. Colonel Mike O or Colonel John Peters would never have agreed to such a request for fire commando. As Angelo Panza confirmed in the TV 2000 interview that the mercenaries had bashed on the wall the body of Congolese children, Colonel Angelo Panza threatened to shoot in the head any mercenaries that would harm an innocent civilian. Angelo Panza says that together with the group, he rescued 1,400 hostages during two years of actions. Oh, 1,800 hostages in four years in another press interview. And barely 217 butchered by the symbols. I was a member of Five Commando as office interpreter for a couple of months at the end of 1964. Then, as a combatant from 1965 with the rank of sergeant after strenuous drill of six hours daily for about three or four months by RSM Alan Murphy, a member of British SAS ending in March 1967 with the rank of Major. Except during the 15 days vacation at the end of every six months contract and the roughly three months convalescence in Johannesburg for a stomach wound caused by landmine shrapnel, I was always stationary in the area along Lake Tanganyika, like Kivu, up to the Uganda and South Sudanese border.
I can testify that the written and declared accusations by Angelo Panza on Five Commando from 1965 on are a figment of his imagination. Of the campaign to stop the Simbas, they had conquered three quarters of the Congo up to the captures of Stanleville and later the liberation of Fizi and Baraka on the area along Lake Tanganyika was already reported by Mike Ho on his book Congo Mercenaries. Where he described all the military actions with the names of the mercenaries that fought bravely and names of civilians rescued and of somebody that joined five commando like the Belgian father de Moe. He, as chaplain, was performing religious services for Catholic mercenaries and Congolese soldiers. However, Colonel Michael never mentioned Angelo Panza in his book as a combatant or a leader of a group of free hostages. During my activity as a fighter and later as agent for Western countries, I kept in touch with Mike Hall for more than 20 years. Whenever I asked him to confirm Father Angelo's claims, he said that he knew nothing about it. In two years that I was operating from the Baraka base with raids on Simba's camps, action combined with six commando around the Lake Kivu's area, from Bukavu to Abel Farashi, bordering Uganda and Sudan, plus some raids around Stanleville to lessen the Simba's pressure on that city. We also moved some civilians to safety out on trucks. As commander of a group of mercenaries in the Uvira base, I never heard mention the action of Angelo Panza and his group of mercenaries. No five commando mercenary were under his leadership or of any civilian or a missionary for the duty of liberating civilian and religious hostages, as that was largely done during the military attack of five and six commandos of the first liberation of Stanleyville. Mike Ho and other five commando senior officers never gave to a civilian without combat experience their fighters for humanitarian actions, such as the contract with the Congolese army related to military actions alone to free the area occupied by the rebel symbols. The liberation of civilian and religious hostages was a consequence of military action in the area. When a small number of hostages was liberated, as happened to me and my men, the action was uncovered by the contract of five commando with the Congolese army, which meant such action was at the volunteers' own peril and risk. After the conquest of Fizi and Baraka, Baraka became the new base of Five Commando along Lake Tanganyika to Uvira in the north. The Baraka base was always headed by a colonel, first commanded by Mike Ho, then by John Peters, and finally by George Schroeder.
The colonel did engage in raids against the rebels, but remained at the base, planning attacks against the Simbas, holding meetings with the platoon officers in the operations room. After my promotion to senior officers, I joined the meetings for the planning of attacks on Simba's camps. In the 5 Commando zone and those that 5 Commando did together with 6 Commando in the zone. On the Baraka base there were three intelligence agents. They were British David Goff, Tom Courtney and Jay White that informed their commanders of everything that happened in the 5 Commando area. I inquired but received no confirmation of the group operating outside 5 Commando control led by Angelo Panza or by any civilian. Neither did the group exist in the 6 Commando zone nor in the territory of Group Leopard led by Jean Scrama. The first time I heard our Greek cook Trianta Philopoulos and the couple of mercenaries in Baraka say Father Angelo did the right thing. I then realized that the missionary Father Angelo had joined a group of five commando mercenaries to fight the Simbas, most probably up to the liberation of Stanleyville. I found this interesting and appreciable for a combatant as I was. Then I heard no more. I never heard from the officers that Angelo Panza fought or was fighting with five commando men. What I cannot accept, and the story becomes the truth if published and non negated, is what Angelo Panza quotes that is reported in a book about his adventures. In the book, he states The South Africans are dreadful, as brutal as the Congolese soldiers. They abhor the blacks and love to torture the prisoners, rape the women and commit cruel atrocities on them. To ignore this lie involving me and my comrades is completely unacceptable. Five Commando was a military outfit with the discipline of the British Army. Besides, if such atrocities had been committed, Five Commando wouldn't have had the Congolese population help with informers Lord bearers and scouts. All the Congolese villages harmed by the rebels contributed to the conquest over the Simbas. Angelo Panza should say we and when such atrocities took place, mention times and how the facts occurred. Please don't quote journalistic or communist reportage of the incident. As an example of fake news, I remember the newspaper, Lumita, of 29th November 1981, of the Italian Communist Party, with the headline, Seychelles, Proven the South African Involvement. The article mentioned the South African Peter Duffy as second in command to Colonel Mike Hall. Duffy, they had been in the Congo for a short while, from March to July 1966, in the coup d'etat members was carrying toys for the Seychelles children as an act of goodwill and public relations. Michael said that Duffy was the ideal man for the position of master of ceremonies as he had the gift of the gap. Michael for the adventures confirmed my rank of major and the two IC positions as it appears written on the South African Supreme Court sentence on the United Nations Security Council District General S715492 of 17th November 1982. Report of the Security Council Commission of Inquiry established under Resolution 496 of 1981 concerning the Seychelles and on the book written by Mike Hall, The Seychelles Affair. Another story by Angelo Panza that appears on the book about his ventures is about four mercenaries 
Potrias is reported in another narrative, were gunned down by a friend of the main character, Marco Giraldi, which is Angelo Panza in the story. As those mercenaries were on the point of killing the missionary and his friends, the leader of the five commando mercenaries by the name of Porter, a fictitious name, would have blamed the Simbas for the killing to prove that the area wasn't secure yet, so to obtain a further contract of six months from Mobutu. That proves that such info by Angelo Panza is ridiculous, as he doesn't know anything about Five Commandos relationship with the Congolese army leaders. As a matter of fact, the contract signed by the mercenaries was renewable automatically after the six-month period unless the mercenaries did not return after his 15-day vacation or left the unit without informing the intelligence personnel or the paymaster, Lieutenant Colin Povey. Furthermore, apart from the wounded, they went left behind as written in the book. The dead ones had their death certificate completed and given to the paymaster while their bodies were brought to the base of Baraka or Alberville for burial. The relatives of the dead mercenaries received an amount between 30 and 50,000 US dollars, uh, about 100 times the value today. As Angelo Panza lost 28 fighters, or 47, as he said in the Radio Armonia Humana interview, who would have paid such an enormous amount of money to the next of kin? The mercenaries who Angelo Panza said signed a contract with him would have been acting outside the official operations of Fight Commando, in which case no one would have paid, unless perhaps he was the apostolic nuncio that pushed Angelo Panza in the adventure. In some assertions by Angelo Panza that his weapon jammed as he forgot to load it, or that the magazine dropped on his hand, and his performance on the minefield that killed a dear friend of his, I gather that Angelo Panza has a very flimsy knowledge of weapons and landmines. I'm obliged to say all of this to protect my name and that of my commanders, Colonel Mike Hall, Colonel John Peters, and Colonel Joe Schroeder, and all the other combatants who died defending the democratic values against the Marxist onslaught of the African continent. Farewell, Hans von Lieres, Alan Murphy, Peter Rosmith, Nettie Peterson, Joe Webner, Alistair Wicks, Ian Gordon, Hugh Van Oppens, Hans Germani, Dave Abraham, Ron Columbic, Tim Dreyer, Dick Hammond, Sam Cassidy, Ian Yule, Peter Duffy, Taffy Williams, Louis Van Eerden, Penton Ferreira, Butch Scholes, Swanepoel, Butch Kuman, Bruce Alexander, and the four stylish Italians, Gino Tozzi, Eugenio Ciccocelli, Perissinotto, and Piero Nebbiolo.
Finally, a parting adieu by Mike Orr. During the course of four glorious campaigns, which we have fought together as comrades in arms, Fight Commando has helped to alter the course of history and change the face of the Congo for the better. It is a record of which we may be justly proud. I salute you all.